<clears throat> so the other day, I was uh, in a conversation with a friend of mine, and she says, hey, you should see the tweet that I just posted. And I was like, okay, and I went over and looked at the tweet, and it was a nice tweet. It was, uh, you know, her standing there in a shirt that said, always smile, and then she, of course, lifts up the shirt and shows her breasts and said, have a great evening. And I said, I should retweet that. And she goes, you should. So I did. And then some people lost their minds. <sighs> Now, there were people who immediately thought, you know, hey, Matt's been hacked. Well, here I am. I wasn't hacked. Uh, I do realize it was out of character for me to post something like that. When I retweeted it, I included, you know, NSFW just so that it, people would know it's not necessarily safe for work. I wasn't just trying to shovel, you know, porn your direction. Um, but the responses were amusing. The two of us sat there on, on Skype and kind of read things as they, they came in. And, and a lot of it we laughed about. But there were some things that were very disturbing. So I wanted to address that fairly quickly at the start of the show. Yes, there are people in my life who are important to me who are sex workers. Ooh. You know what else? There's probably people in your life who are important to you who are also sex workers, but you might not know it because you're a pretentious douche who likes to shame people for the jobs that they do. Now, some of the things that, that came in, they were like, oh, it's a midlife crisis, Matt's middle age, and here he is posting stuff with some young escort. Uh, if this is a crisis, give me crisis all the fucking time. <laughs> uh, there are real issues that need to be addressed. I mean, I realize people have different views about pornography and sex work, and some of them stem from some very real concerns about the risks inherent in some of those jobs, about um, you know what society's view of those things are, about safety issues. But it's the moral question that really got to me, because... I'm part of the secular community. I've advocated for secular humanism. I've advocated for individual freedom. I'm a sex-positive individual. I support the notion that people should be free to do whatever they feel like doing as long as they're doing it responsibly. And that should be the critical issue. And it really bothered me that a portion of the secular community seems to be some pearl-clutching, hand-wringing, moralizing, puritanical jackasses uh, that decide it's okay to just shame people for stuff. So I posted the pic, and here's some things for you to consider. Why is it okay for me to post a picture of my nipple, but not a woman's nipple? Think about that for a while, because that's part of the problem here. Now, there were questions that, that came in. Somebody said, well, this isn't a profession that you'd want your daughter to do. Oh, really? Well, thank you for proving that you don't know me at all, because it doesn't matter what I would want my daughter to do. What matters is what my daughter wants to do. And if she's a responsible human being who wants to engage in sex work, and by the way, somebody said, is sex work a euphemism for prostitution? No, prostitution is one in the broader category of sex work. It includes porn stars, escorts, call girls, uh, phone sex workers, it, in nude pictures, whatever. This is a broad range, and it's, human sexuality is something that is important to all of us, even to people who are asexual and may not even care about sex. It is still a component of who we are, and those people need to be recognized as well. And as soon as you start running around shaming people for something or assuming that your little personal baggage should apply to everybody else, you've made a horrible mistake. Somebody else said, well, would you want your wife to do this? My wife did do this. Uh, hello. I'm sure that's a surprise to a number of you. And yes, I talked to her beforehand and let her know I was going to say that. But that's the point. A lot of people don't talk about the fact that they've done things like this before or that they are doing them now because they are terrified of the response that they're going to get from people who care about them and people who they care about. This goes on. By the way, when you ask, hey, you wouldn't want your daughter to do this, why didn't you ask whether or not I would want my son to do it? Because sex work is not limited to women. This isn't a let's protect the women and children and run for the hills thing. Sex affects all of us. And I think that some of the objections that I've heard are like, well, you know, it, it's, not a, it's not a great job. There's lots of problems with it. Uh, there's people doing it who don't like those jobs. Yes, there are. Um, I've had friends and I've had intimate partners who were both sex workers or previous sex workers. I've known people who had no business working in that industry, were, seemed to be uh, not necessarily forced into it, but you know, out, out of a lack of options, they did that work and they hated it. And I have helped some of them actually get out of that work and get into other jobs that they like better. But that's true for people who join the military. There are people who join the military because they have no other options. There are people who join the military because 
in a little bit of legal trouble, and in the court proceeding, they reached a plea bargain where instead of going to jail, you would have to go in the military. There are a lot of shitty jobs out there. There are people who hate their jobs all over the planet. There are jobs that are risky. There are jobs that are dangerous. I think sex workers should be put up there on a pedestal in the same way that we do with military because they are performing an essential function. And as long as they're doing it as responsible human beings, where we are considering issues of consent, where we are setting appropriate boundaries, where we're exercising cautionary safe sex, and where we are keeping people from taking other actions that might be worse, that should be applauded. Now, somebody said they lost respect for me when I retweeted that. Fine. I'm, <laughs> I'm thrilled. Um, I, I, I asked them why. Why would you lose respect for me? They didn't answer, so already they showed that they really aren't thinking about this. But here's the thing. There are big problems in the world. I want the secular community to be better at dealing with those, and that means we need to get rid of some of the baggage. And there are people out there who are still hanging on to this baggage from puritanical religious moral systems that make it so that they cannot look at these issues fairly. And as long as that's going on, it inhibits our ability to have conversation, it inhibits our ability to uh, affirm people's actions and choices and say, you know, yes, if this is what you in fact want to do, I'm supportive of you. And if it's something you don't want to do, I'm supportive of that decision as well. But until we get past this, we can't really deal with the issues of how do we go about legalizing? How do we go about regulating? How do we go about making sure that there's not sex trafficking? We can't deal with those issues because there are a bunch of people who still have a big stick up their butt. And so I'm going to recommend that you pull the stick out of your butt, replace, replace it with a baby Jesus butt plug. <laughs> And get over yourself a little bit and realize that other people's choices aren't necessarily yours. When we shame people for what they do, especially if it's people who are doing it responsibly, who are wanting to do this, we do a disservice to the entire community. And so, yeah, for those people who are, oh, Matt, Matt knows sex workers? Yeah, I know lots of them. Uh, Many of them are great people. Some of them don't want to be in that job, but a good chunk of them do. And I'm not going to slut shame anybody, just like I'm not going to fat shame anybody, just like I'm not going to age shame anybody, because I'm not a jackass. And I would hope, well, I am on occasion. Well, I'm likely to be a jackass here a little bit. <laughs> but I would hope that we can all do better and realize that just because you don't like something doesn't mean you're right and doesn't mean you should be imposing that on other people. So yes, I sent out the tweet. Yes, I'm dating someone who's an escort. Yes, I've had intimate relations with other people who are sex workers. Uh, you can clutch your pearls and go post your videos about how awful I am, and I will continue to enjoy my life with other responsible people. Amen, sir. Thank and, you. and, you know, I'd like to add to that. How do you even get there from a secular worldview? Right, because I understand how Christians get there because they think sex is evil and terrible and bad. But if you take that away, then how how is sex work shameful in any way? Why would that be any different than working at Burger King or, or, or any other thing, right? It's way better than working well, at Burger King. Well, you make a lot days. more money, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because if you take a look at history, uh, at different times, sex has had a different level of acceptance, and sex work particularly, where, you know, some, in some cases and sometimes it was just like, hey, it's a de facto, oh, she's working as a prostitute or he's working as a rent boy thing, whatever. It's, we, we tend to be riding this wave of let's have a massive backlash and say that, oh, this is dirty or, or problematic. And I get it. If you don't want to do it or you don't like it, I mean, that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it was just surprising. And, and by the way, yes, I got really irritated at some of the comments, but not some of the others. We, we literally sat there, she and I were Skyping, and we're like laughing and going, wow. Uh, it didn't take long for some people to like really run off the deep end. Mm -hmm. Oh, you wouldn't want your daughter to? Yeah, whatever. Uh, right. Well, and the other thing too is I think a lot of secular people fail to recognize that even once they le leave religion or even if they've never been in religion, that religious attitudes about sex still infect our culture, yep. whether or not you, you, you know, whether or not you are religious, you're still affected by the way that people act about it. And we've just got to be better than that. You know, we have to go back to first principles and ask, okay, if this is immoral, why? Yeah. You know, give me a good argument. Yes. Ed. I'm waiting to hear it. Me too. And also, by the way, if you're offended by nipples. <gasps> I saw a great post on Facebook the other day that had a picture in it uh, with a finger pointing to it. Say, this is a male nipple. Anytime you want to post a picture of a woman's breast, <laughs> right. just cut and paste this male nipple over there and you'll be just fine. Yeah. And I thought that was fucking brilliant. But 